it's raining and we're in Chicago and I'm determined to do this outside in a garden. Car. I think I can actually say that uh, Karen Cushman's Catherine Paul Birdie, hold on a second, influenced this book right here, One Came Home, but I didn't know it until after the book had been published. The story is this, in the mid 90s, I took a job as a children's bookseller at a Borders bookstore. And at that point, I was, I was in a master's degree program for writing, so I was writing, um, but not for kids. And, but I got this job as a children's bookseller. It kind of happened that I worked in the children's section. And so I actually had to read like a ton of children's books just to get up to speed so I could introduce people to books. So during that time period, Karen Cushman won, I believe it was a Newbery Honor for that book. And I read it. And I loved it. I really did not know that middle grade literature could be like that. And I really loved that book. Anyway, I forgot about it. I never read, I never read it again. Um, and then now we come to 2013. Um, and I wrote this book. It came out. And Karen Cushman blogs about this book. And I realized that reading her book, Catherine called Birdie, had somehow been in my subconscious and probably really influenced this book. Although I read the 1996 Newbery Honor book, The Watsons Go to Birmingham, only after I'd finished Paperboy, it gave me confidence that a book such as mine could find an audience. The author of the book, Chris Curtis, followed the three rules I use in writing for young people. The first rule is, don't write for young people. Just tell your story. The second rule is, write a book that has never been written. And the third rule is, write a book that has a reason to exist. While it took me six years to get Paperboy down on paper, in a sense, I had been writing it for 50 years. I let the Paperboy have the final say with the way he closed his book. Words in the air blow away as soon as you say them, but words on paper last forever. Hi, I'm Holly Black, and I want to talk to you for a moment about um, two Newbery books that were incredibly important to me. Uh, one is The Black Cauldron, which is a Newbery Honor book, and the other is The High King, um, which was a Newbery winner. And they are two books that were part of Lloyd Alexander's Pridean Chronicles. Um, those books were the first time I read high fantasy and they were a big part of what made me the reader and writer I am today. Sometimes people talk about fantasy books as though they are um, only escapes from the real world. But for me, um, when I first read about Taryn, I had a feeling like I was coming home. Um, like I was just finding something that meant so much to me that I hadn't even known existed. Um, not every book is going to be right for every reader, but for every reader, there's a book that's just going to open, um, open that person's mind, open that person's heart, and make them hungry to read a whole lot more. And for me, those books were absolutely Lloyd Alexander's Pride and Chronicles. Hi, I'm Kate DiCamello, and I'm going to talk just for a few minutes about uh, Newbery, Newbery Honor, Newbery winners that have mattered to me. I was a kid who loved to read. I went to the library uh, twice a week with my mom and there was a spin rack in the library where all the yearling Newbery paperbacks were and I always knew to look for that medal on a book. So it's mattered to me since I was a kid. 
and then when I was an adult and I started uh, writing, there was one Newbery Honor book in particular that really, really influenced me, and that was uh, Christopher Paul Curtis's The Watsons Go to Birmingham, 1963. I read that book and I thought, I didn't know that you could do this, that you could write something this funny and this meaningful and I want to try and do this. So I took uh, the Watsons Go to Birmingham 1963, I checked it out from work, I was working at a book warehouse and I took it home and I typed up some of the pages trying to figure out how Christopher Paul Curtis had worked that magic. So that Newbery Honor book really, really changed my life. Um, and the Newberries do tend to change your life if you're a reader or if you're a writer. Hi, my name is Brian Floca. I'm the author and illustrator of Locomotive, a Caldecott book that has been an inspiration for me for a very long time is Cathedral by David Macaulay. This is a book that inspired me as a kid when I first read it. In fact, I read this copy of it. You can tell this is my original copy because it's falling apart. Anyway, uh, I, I, as a kid, I was, I was inspired by the fantastic drawings, by the, uh, the sense of architecture, the sense of scale, the sense of, of place and space that you'll find in this book. And as a bookmaker today, as someone trying to make his own books, I'm inspired by the thoughtfulness of this book, the intelligence of it, its respect for its readers, its ambition, its the evidence it shows of, of David's love for the subject, um, its generosity, its wit. It's a fantastic book. It's a book, whether you're encountering it as a kid or as an adult for the first time, it's one of those books that um, expands your sense of what, of what picture books can do. It's, a, it's, it's been an inspiring book for a long time and will continue to be so. Cathedral.